before I even attempt the first question in this set. I can tell that it's a difficult one. Why is that? Throughput accounting. That's the most difficult of the specialist management accounting tools, in my opinion. And I see a lot of figures buried in letters and words. Okay, so this is going to take time to unpack. And in the exam, this, this is an example of one that I would potentially flag and come back and do later, because I want to do the easier questions first. But we will do it. And we start by reading the requirement, throughput accounting ratio. We don't do anything until we deploy the formula. Okay, and You have to remember this formula. They don't give it to you in the formula sheet. Throughput accounting ratio is the throughput contribution per hour on the bottleneck divided by the other factory costs, right? The overheads and the labor and then the bottleneck hours in that period. Before we read the story, we turn this into a shopping list. We can drill down into both pieces of the formula. Throughput contribution is a price minus direct materials divided by hours on the bottleneck. Other factory costs would be the factory overheads plus the spend on labor divided by hours of bottleneck time. That helps me. That helps me make a shopping list. Before I read that story, I need price, materials, time on the bottleneck, overheads, labor, and then the total hours. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. I'll show you the way I do it, which is a little bit longer than the model solution, but it's the it's the logical way for me. And then I'll, I'll show you the way the book does it. And if you are a mathematical rock star and you're thinking on your feet in the exam, maybe that, that comes to you. But if it doesn't, it's not a problem. You can still get the, sol the solution doing it the longer way. Now, I just read. Manufactures a product four hours. Four is the bottleneck resource. Okay, so that figure goes there. Then we see there are 10 machines, 12 hours a day, five days a week. That goes here. That's the bottleneck hours in the period. We get a price. We get direct materials. That goes here and here. Then we get, this is the tricky part of the question. Then we get the labor and the overheads, however, that's presented at the unit level, not the period, not the monthly level or the weekly level. So that just means there's an overhead absorption rate in action, right, for the overhead costs. They've gone to the trouble of dividing the, the overheads by the units, right, in that, in that week or that month. And then we know 150 in a week, okay? So if we know the hours in the week and the units in the week, we can get the other factory costs per hour. And I plug those numbers into my equation. So that's going to be what? 130 minus 50 divided by 4 over 40 plus 20. Okay, that's the unit level plus 150 units in a week divided by the 10 times the 12 times the 5. That's going to give me the 600 hours in the week. If I do all of that, guys, I will get the correct answer, which is A, 1.33. Now, if you've checked this, if you've encountered this question before, or you've seen a different uh, model solution for it, the book does it a more elegant way. We know the unit level cost, right? The unit level information, that's 130 minus 50. So that would be the throughput contribution per unit. Now we also know the labor and the overheads per unit, right? Which would be a 40 and the 20. Now, because we're at the unit level, the hours would be the same at the unit level. Whatever hours are there would, would cancel out. So now we can just simplify the equation and we'll get the same solution, A. This next question in the set is an, is an example of an easier question. 
look at that. The inf there's less information to process and it's given to us in a table. So this is an example of a question that I would do and exploit some easy marks as soon as it pops up on my computer screen. And we see this word. Read this first. What is the return per hour? Excuse me. Return per hour. I don't know what return they're talking about here when I read the requirement, but then I see this word, bottleneck. Boom. Bottleneck only relates to throughput accounting in our syllabus. So we know this is about throughput return or throughput contribution. So I just deploy my formula. Throughput contribution per hour is simply going to be price minus direct materials over the time on the bottleneck. And we have everything we need. We've got a price, we've got materials. We don't need this one. If you remember conversion costs from management accounting, that would be the direct labor and the variable overheads that go into a process of, of, of running a process. Time on the bottleneck, six. So if we're in a big rush, we're gonna do this in a hurry and we're going to go 320 minus 80. Okay, put that over the six and we'll get one of the answers here. Unfortunately, if you did that, that would be the wrong answer, guys, because this is minutes. We need hours. How many minutes are in an hour? Well, we just divide that by 60. Okay, so that's the trick in this question. It looks easy, but there is a little trick. The distractor is right there, but that is wrong. Correct answer, everybody, with those figures would be B. Always read this part first. What will improve throughput? Throughput, we only see that word really when we're looking at specialist management accounting techniques, when we're looking at throughput accounting. And we know that this is based on the theory of constraints. How do we improve through, throughput? Identify the bottleneck and then reduce the time on the bottleneck, a continuous process. So we've got four different approaches to improving the throughput. Notice that the answers are focusing on an individual process. We don't care about the approach. That's not so interesting to me. It's more about which process are we improving. That's the distractor. We don't control demand and demand is not related to this. Now, how many products do we make? We make two, X and Y. How many do we do? We do 10, we do 16. We run all of our products through three common stages of a process. What we have to do is find the bottleneck. The bottleneck is the stage that limits our output. So the way to do that, let's check the hours that we have, which is given to us right here, versus the hours that we need. So we've just got to calculate the hours that we need. And if we're doing 10, so for process one, 10 times one is 10. 16 times 0 0.75 is 12. So we need 22, we have 22. Process one does not limit my production. It's not the bottleneck. Now, process three, 10 times one, 10, 16 times 0 0.5 is 8, that's 18. Guys, 3, it's not limiting my production. It's got to be 2, and let's check that. 1 times, 10, 10 times 0 0.75, 7, 7 7.5, right? And then 16 times 1 is 16, so process 2 needs 23.5 hours, but oh my goodness, we only have 22. We've identified process two as the bottleneck. Answer is A. The final question here in ACCA Classic, evaluate the statements, which one is true? We're talking about throughput contribution. Inventory levels should be kept to a minimum. We like that. Throughput accounting assumes everything that we make, we sell just in time. So we do not want 
inventory lying around when we're following just in time, especially, you know, finished goods. And all machines within a factory should be 100% efficient with no idle time. Well, no, that is not part of throughput accounting. What we would like is to find and remove the bottleneck, okay? So it's a continuous process of looking for the least efficient stage of production using continuous improvement and fixing that. It's never gonna be everything 100% efficient. So statement two goes out, answer is A.